Namaste. So we're continuing with the series on Lakshmi Tantra. <laughs> I can't tell you how much bliss I get from doing these. Uh, she immediately responds <laughs> from within. You know, and this is the advantage of the goddess worship. You know, you all should really try it. This, these uh, videos on Lakshmi Tantra aren't getting many views. I think it's because people are afraid of the scriptures. Scripture is going to tell them something they don't want to hear. <laughs> but the key to her heart is in the scriptures. Try to understand. And if she becomes favorable to you, then there's nothing in this world that can hurt you. See, this is the advantage of worshiping the goddess. Anyway, the key to her heart is through mantras. So if you want to please her, which is highly advisable, <laughs> then you should explore the practice of her mantras. Now listen, she's going to explain this. I am revelation and bliss, and I am the eyehood of Hari. Know me, who am called Prana, and consist of pure knowledge as the mother of all mantras. As I become active to create, all these created objects come out of me. And again, at the time of dissolution, they surely are dissolved in me. I am the Bala, the prowess of all these, and they manifest forms of myself. I am manifest in countless ways, I, the goddess, the wish-fulfilling gem, manifest myself in diverse forms. The vowels, consonants, combinations of vowels with consonants, sounds, words, all extant sacred sciences and tantras, as well as sentences, topics, sections, and chapters, various external and internal agamas, both popular and Vedic, and different spoken languages. All these are my mantra form. So she is sound, she is speech, and she is the consciousness that is aware of speech and its meaning. Because there's no purpose to having speech without meaning, right? But meaning is determined by context. For example, if I say, I threw the ball, it has one meaning. But if I said, I went to the dance and I had a ball, it's the same word. But because the context is different, the meaning is different. So the point of the scriptures is to provide the context for the meaning of life. And we see here that the meaning of life the bliss, huh? Everybody wants bliss. And they think they can get it from external objects, but that bliss is only temporary and very conditional. Huh? The real bliss comes from within by worship of God and goddess. Now, if you don't know this, if you haven't experienced this, you know, you should definitely just turn off the video and try it. Try worshiping her. You don't have to have any particular set mantra or anything, although that helps. But just in your mind, approach her humbly and pray. See what happens. <laughs> I, oh, here's my peacock friend. Here's a clip of him eating peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> so in the same way, creation and dissolution are one thing, one cycle, and it is accomplished by mantras. So mantras are extremely important.
both to the process of creation and dissolution and to the process of self-realization. Now let's go on and hear her describe more. I manifest myself in diverse polarized forms as the subject and object of knowledge according to varying intellectual capacity. Similarly, my manifestation as the aggregate of all mantras or as one individual mantra depends on the varying mental capacity of adepts. Mantras are of four types, bija, pinda, pada, and sangya. O Vasava, consider five gems amongst them to be the outstanding ones. All of these are present in my Tantra as butter is present in curd. Now this is deep. Among all mantras, five are very prominent. And what are those five? Aum, Shring, Hring, Kling, and Ain. These five mantras, together or separately, <laughs> award all desires. You have to understand, you know, this process of self-realization is so easy. You know, if you just don't get all caught up in all the complicated rules and and rituals and all that stuff. That's nice, you know, if you can do that. That's very nice. But if you're at a beginning stage and you don't have the knowledge, you know, to go deep into the rituals and so on, just chant the mantra. Just chant the mantra and everything will be supplied. You'll see. Huh? All it takes is a little bit of faith, enough to approach someone who's qualified and ask for initiation. So once you're initiated into the mantras, then by chanting them, well, you just have to see for yourself. It's the most amazing thing. Here you are, you know, sitting in a room or maybe walking outside somewhere and chanting this mantra. And slowly, slowly, it's hard to see how it happens. All the problems in your life are resolved. I've experienced this, even at my age, <laughs> over the last three years, when I started studying the Sri Vidya. So as soon as I started chanting these mantras, beginning with the Gayatri mantra as Japa, huh? because Gayatri contains Aum and the meaning of Aum. And then the Mahashodashi mantra, which contains all five of these wonderful mantras. These are called Bijas or Bijaksharas. Bijakshara. Bija means a seed and Akshara means a letter. So these seed letters actually have very deep and extensive meaning. And by chanting them, you invoke the goddess and all her powers in a favorable way. So do I have to say any more? <laughs> Let's let her speak again. The most powerful bija, Hring, bestows on the adept fulfillment of all desires. To those desiring sons, it gives sons, and a kingdom to those desiring a kingdom, prosperity to those longing for prosperity, and liberation to those aspiring after liberation. It destroys the adept's enemies and attracts those who are welcome. It is indeed the wish-fulfilling gem, and there is no real gem that fulfills desires. The other bijas, such as Sha, Ka, Shring, and Kshmring, fulfillers of all wishes, rank next to this one. The adept should perform Anganyasa in combination with all the six vowels from beginning to end while displaying the Jati Mudra. The same method is enjoined for the remaining bijas, Aing, Kling, Sao, and Ing. Through the addition of the first bija, Aung, 
which infuses them with the total I-hood of God. All the various groups of mantras become identified with me. The deities of the mantras, sustained by my Shakti, are thus identical with me, so that I thereby become the focus of meditation. The particular deity presiding over each mantra should be envisioned as possessing a female form and appropriate color, weapons, ornaments, etc. Consequently becoming identified with me, mantras soon yield to desired results. Now, is this cooler than cool or what? <laughs> so mantras are powerful. You have to practice them. That's the bottom line. Now, she mentioned the mantra Hring. Hring is really the essence of the Sodashi mantra, which you hear in the beginning of each of these videos. That mantra contains six lines, and in each line, the bija Hring is present. So although there are other bijas, it's really about Hring. And Hring is, well, as she says, it's the, the greatest wish-fulfilling gem. So by practicing this mantra, gradually all your wishes will be fulfilled. Huh? You have to have just a little faith to accept the initiation and get started. And then from there, you can get really anything your heart desires. Now in this previous section, she alludes to the process of nyasa. And we made a video on the matrika nyasa, which is the most complete nyasa, in which all the combinations of the vowels and consonants are made into bijas with the appropriate mantras. And uh, using the proper mudra. Now, what is the mudra? It's very simple. You put the thumb and the ring finger of the right hand together. If you have a sacred thread, you should wrap your sacred thread around your thumb two and a half times. And then with this mudra, you touch various parts of the body according to the particular mantra and bija that you're chanting. This is called nyasa. So when you perform this nyasa, this charges the uh, nadis, the different energy channels of the body. It's not about the gross body. It's about the energy body. And by charging the nadis with the goddess energy, then one is connected with her all over the body. The entire body is purified. One reaches a higher energy level at which one can cognize the absolute truth. And this is the highest enlightenment. Aum <laughs> Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. <laughs>